Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Office Hours with Jess. Um, I know I've been posting a lot of vlog style videos lately. So this is my first kind of more serious um, video that I've posted um, in a couple of weeks. Um, and today I'm actually going to be focusing on a more broad topic about just sleep hygiene in general. So I have some pretty bad sleep problems, as I'm sure most people in this world, you know, struggle with sleep. Um, sleep is very fragile. And for me, my problem is no matter how late I stay up or how tired or sleep deprived I am, I, my body will just wake up before 7 a.m. Like, I, I don't know what it is. There's like some strong internal circadian rhythm inside of me that um, even when I've gotten like three hours of sleep or I'm like super tired and stressed, I don't know, but I just, my body just gets up at seven. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too excited to start my days because I, you know, enjoy doing what I do so much, I guess. Um, but this has been a problem for me because sometimes I just like want to get more sleep because I am tired and then my body just won't let me. Um, so I've done a lot of digging to just really make sure that I'm maximizing all of my, you know, little habits here and there to make sure that I'm really optimizing myself to get the best sleep possible. And like 80% of the time it kind of works for me. So I'll walk through those tips now. Um, I've broken this up into daytime tips and nighttime tips. So I'll start with my daytime tips. So the first one, it's really important to work out. I think, I mean, as a fitness instructor, I'm obviously going to say this, but in general, it's really good just to like tire your body out and it, you know, so that you can sleep a little bit better later that night. Um, but it's really important to work out earlier in the day, not right before bed, because like, it'll just get your body so excited. And then, um, all that endorphins or whatever, um, that kind of gets fired in your body when you exercise will actually prevent you from um, wanting to that adrenaline. Yeah. will prevent you from wanting to, um, fall back asleep afterwards. So the earlier, the better, um, I try not to exercise like a couple hours before bed. Um, as you can see, there's a picture of me here doing a plank in broad daylight because I love working out in the middle of the day, ideally around noon time. Um, so no work in bed. Um, I break this rule all the time, so I'm being a hypocrite here. But this is something that I, you know, you should strive to do. Only use your bed for the two S's. Um, I'll let you interpret what those two S's are. Um, and yeah, this is an important one that I'm still working on myself. Tip number three is no caffeine, period. Um, I used to be very addicted to coffee. I would drink like four or five cups a day. And um, I eventually got down, that down to one cup a day. And then I just completely then switched over to decaf coffee. I think I did this right before the pandemic too. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if it's helping, but I'm just sticking to it. So I've cut out all caffeine, including so coffee, tea, so no black tea, no green tea. I don't drink Diet Coke anymore. Um, I try to even avoid chocolate. I mean, chocolate upsets my stomach, but like anything with even trace amounts of like caffeine, I try not to drink. So instead I have decaf coffee, which I know still has like a couple milligrams of caffeine, but that's fine. Um, and I do drink herbal teas now when I am craving tea. All right. Another one is no alcohol. I mean, I actually don't drink that much anymore now. I used to, um, but um, I, I, I remember it would always confuse me why I would like go to bed super late after a night out drinking and um, get up super early in the morning. And that's because alcohol actually dehydrates you and it makes you not sleep as well. So if you can, like maybe on a school night, avoid drinking, um, you know, I know the kind of glass of wine before bed feels really good, but that might actually be hindering your sleep. Um, so, you know, an example, maybe taking shots before 10 a.m. is a probably better idea than that glass of wine before bed when it comes to sleep hygiene. I don't know. That's just a joke. But um, just strategically think about when you're drinking your alcohol and how that might affect your sleep. Um, another thing is to avoid late naps. Um, I try not to nap anytime afternoon. Um, sometimes when I don't get enough sleep the night 
of I will take a nap after breakfast to kind of make up for it. Um, but I really try not to nap afternoon because it really does impact um, the sleep pressure that I have going into the next night of sleep. And this one is super hard, I know, for some people. Um, another thing is to meditate. Um, this is something I've picked up in the past year, and I can talk more about this in another video, but um, I just do like three to five minutes of meditation on Headspace every day. And again, I'm not you know, doing this analysis of N equals one and R or something, but I have noticed that at least for me personally, there is some sort of association between the days that I meditate and um, the quality of sleep that I then get that night. I think there's something there, um, but I would recommend trying to um, incorporate some type of meditation into your routine. So now onto the nighttime tips. So the first one is um, to wind down. This is something that I definitely do. I stop doing any and all work at 8 p.m., which is around when I start cooking dinner. Um, I, I'm a late eater, um, but that um, after I start cooking and eating dinner, I'm like done, no more work. I also recently learned how to turn off email notifications on my phone um, using the new focus feature on iOS. Um, and that's also helped a lot because sometimes when I get that like urgent email or just like an email that I don't really want to see at like 9 or 10 p.m. that like starts making me think about school again. Um, yeah, that can help kind of make sure that all of that waits until the next day, first thing in the morning, which is usually a much better time to see those kind of things. Another thing that was recommended to me um, to do right before or like as you're kind of like closing up your day is to check all of your to do lists. This can seem kind of weird, like, oh, why would you do that? Because it'll get you to start thinking about your work again. But it's to make sure that you've completed or at least postponed or made a plan for all of your to do items that you were supposed to do for that day. And it's also nice, at least I like to do this, to do a quick preview of what's on your to-do list for the next day so that there's no surprises. And so you know, okay, this is what I've done today and this is what's coming up tomorrow and all of that's clear and there's nothing sort of like lingering as you are um, getting ready for bed. Okay, this is another big one, supplements. Um, so I used to be very dependent on Benadryl. I will admit that I injured my shoulder. I think it was like a couple years after college. I don't even know how, but it was just so painful that I started taking Benadryl to help me sleep, um, at night and just never stopped, even though after my shoulder healed and that was pretty bad. Um, it just felt nice that I could take a pill and, kind of just feel sleepy immediately. And I don't know if at some point that became a placebo. Um, but um, a couple of years ago, I think it was in, um, maybe right when I started my doctoral program, I made it a goal to completely, you know, come clean off of Benadryl and it's been hard. Um, but I now instead take a combination of more, I guess, natural supplements of magnesium, calcium, and I do take melatonin, um, which I have mixed feelings about. I started, I wasn't taking melatonin and then um, the COVID-19 pandemic started in March of 2020. And I was just, there's too much going on. I was like, I need something to, you know, help me sleep a little bit better. Um, and I still take some melatonin now, but um, I think it's a bet, it's, it's a step better than Benadryl. Uh, so I'm going with that. Um, but generally the, that's, that's what I do at least. So you can find, um, kind of, if you choose to, if you want to take supplements, I would recommend one of those three. Um, another thing also I've noticed is not to go to bed too full or too hungry. Um, you don't want to swing in either direction because being too full or too hungry might make you feel uncomfortable as you're kind of laying there in bed, getting ready to fall asleep. Um, Last day or another tip here is your bedroom environment is also very important. Um, darkness is very important for me. Um, I can only really sleep when the room is completely dark. So I have blackout curtains. I'm looking at them now um, that just never open, which is probably not a good thing. Um, they're like stuck on my window. Um, but I have blackout curtains. Those have been the lifesaver. I also use an eye mask um, that I put on. Um, I, I usually have to get up to pee um, in the middle of the night and then I put it on. Um, so that way when like the light peeps through in the morning, um, my eye mask is on my face, but I'm not wearing it the entire time 
um, that I'm sleeping at night. Cool temperature is also really important. Um, I wear less, way less layers when I sleep, um, which is, but yeah, generally being in a cool environment um, helps you fall asleep and just sleep, stay asleep much better. Um, and I also, um, at one point, um, invested and used a weighted blanket, which feels nice. Um, it's like, I think I have like a 30 pound. So it's like a 30 pound blanket that you put on your body and it just feels like someone's cuddling you. Um, so that's a nice feeling. If you, um, you know, want to, um, use one, you can get one off Amazon. Oh yeah. This is just a silly picture of one time when I fell asleep on the floor. You definitely don't want to do that. That's a bad sleeping environment. And um, another thing I like to do is um, read to fall asleep. Um, although people recommend not to use electronics right before falling asleep, I have my Kindle app on my iPhone. And what I like about using it on my iPhone um, and not the Kindle like reader is that like I can read with all the lights off in the room. So like literally my eyes can just close as I'm still holding my iPhone. And then I usually just like toss it off to the side when I'm like right at the cusp of falling asleep. Um, but everything, like I said, because darkness is so important to me, I like can have everything dark, read, get my mind off of things and then just like fall asleep as I'm reading. And I, I personally enjoy that feeling, but in general reading before bed is always a nice thing to do to clear your mind um, from the day and kind of escape for a little bit into whatever book you're reading. Um, and so to conclude, I just have a couple of things, um, that are listed here, things that I don't do that I know are good, um, which I wanted to still include. Um, so these are just a couple of tools. So one is a sound machine. Um, I used to use one of these when I lived in a really noisy apartment, um, but I don't anymore. Um, so, but it could be helpful if like street noise, um, bothers you, um, I don't know, it, it works well for babies. So maybe uh, it's worth trying out because they're not too expensive. Um, people like to wear earplugs. I hate earplugs so much. So not for me, but again, if sound is something that wakes you up, it could be useful. Um, I know some people like to stretch before bed. Um, I don't do this. Um, maybe I should, I don't know. I do a lot of yoga or I just like always stretch after I work out and that kind of checks off my stretching for the day. Um, I've also heard that some sort of like journaling or reflective path, uh, practice um, before bed or meditating as well before bed could be good. I personally, again, don't like to do that, but I know some people like to do that too, again, as a way to kind of clear their thoughts um, for the day. Um, and that's um, what I have in terms of sleep hygiene. Hopefully one or a few more of these tips resonates with you and works. Um, feel free to leave any comments or um, suggestions. Thank you.